Oh, she now. Yeah, I walked around, saw the May 4th Square, made it to Beer Street, made it to Coffee Street, saw Puppy Street. Nice, man. It is a good city. I always talk a lot of snipe. No life in the streets, huh? They can murder you on tape now. How I'm supposed to eat, huh? When my pockets getting raped, why? Officers oversee the demise of the family. Prisons are property. I'ma buy one and release me. That's the sound of your last dream. That's the sound of your dead son. How he only 12? But you saw him and he had a gun. I just goodbye China. The host Knox. Got a guest today. Call me. Or yeah, but I mean, so what what has your experience been? Like, have you met a lot of discrimination out here or like racism? Like, would you say that race, because a lot of people are like, oh man, China must be racist as hell. Or, or they, might, they might be like, oh, they're very xenophobic, which they kind of are a little bit xenophobic. With, obviously, you're going to be a little bit xenophobic when you're, you're uh, I don't want to say it's a, a modernist, because it really isn't. Um, they, they got like 56 ethnicity, supposedly. But they're all Asian, is what I'm trying to say. They're all Chinese. Chinese. Or, with the exception of out west, where they're... They're all a little bit different, like more Turk people. But they definitely have a little bit of xenophobia because obviously it's not like America or, or the UK has various colors of people. It's mostly just yellow here. So you might have like a, a, some experiences where it's us, it, it's us and them, Lao Wei versus, you know, yeah. Chinese. In terms of actual discrimination, I mean, there's no system here that oppresses me. There's no this the system that affect could affect me is the system that just affects foreigners in general, right? So, is there xenophobia? Of course. Is our you know do foreigners have less rights than Chinese people? Of course. China's known for being protectionist, even when it comes to business. I mean, when you think about and it, I don't blame I don't blame them for it either. either. I mean. After the colonial, the old colonialism, where they well, they don't even really have a full-on reference point of like what colonialism actually looks like, which is then it's funny. It's hard for them to fully comprehend like what happened in Africa or what happened in the U.S. Or they do understand imperialism because yeah. they've fought that off for so long. But when you even look at say something like McDonald's or Starbucks, right? Like when they operate in China, they operate as partnerships. They don't operate as what you know called the Wolfie, which is yeah. a wholly yeah. foreign-owned business. So in my case, like, like you can't even buy a house here unless you co-sign with a Chinese person. Exactly. I think it's changed now, but well, you don't. But that's the thing. You don't. You never technically own anything here. Yeah. Even if you're Chinese, you technically never own anything. The same thing with business, right? Everything. Like if you want to open up a business, I think you have to sign with a Chinese person also. Yeah. You have to have a Chinese partner. If and if you don't, then like you're basically telling the government to fuck off, and you know, like yeah. then something could happen, or your business could be purposely oh, yeah, sabotaged. Yeah, they'll, and, they'll seize it. And it's, well, no, they're just like, you don't, you are outside of our protections and all of these types of things that you don't want to be outside of. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see so many Chinese people like, oh, this business, you know, isn't doing so, you know, they close it, open up a new one. And, and they do that, you know, if they already had the first initial capital, they can always get that investment capital back just by working with the state. However, if you're outside of those lines, but realistically, the only way you can be outside of it is if you're a foreigner, but then you don't want to be outside of it because then you don't have the same protections. So, you know, I'm not the 100% expert like on all people, of it. I have people that, like, open up bars. And when they open up the bar, they have to do it with a Chinese person. And that is also a form of security, like you said. Because, you know, the police will come. <laughs> and they will definitely be asking for a little bit of that Hong Bao. Yeah, I mean, so what I would say is, like, in terms of actual discrimination, like, I... Don't like when anytime something happens to me in China and I have even the inkling that this is happening to me, like I always put it in perspective, like what did I just do a, to, to warrant a response, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And some things that happen, like it's like I walk into, say, a, like a couple times I walk into a restaurant and the guy off bucks is like, nah, you can't eat here. And I was like, okay, fine. And yeah. then rather than reacting, I just roll out because they're thinking either he doesn't want a black person in the restaurant. Or he doesn't want a foreigner in his restaurant. Or maybe he's like, I don't want to deal with your shit because I assume that you don't speak Chinese. So I don't even want to go through that. My menu may not have pictures. 
there's a there's so many reasons mm-hmm. that could have led to him being like, you can't eat here. And it's like, cool. And this is China. I, could, I literally went next door, got a good meal, and it was what it was. And, you know, some people will sit there and say, oh, they're racist against black people. The only way you could think that they're specifically racist against black people if you, A, never lived here, and B, have no contextual understanding of their the history cl- yeah, of their, and of yeah. their culture and how they process information. Yep. So, you know. And that's that's where a lot of people, they, they're wearing Western eyes when trying to talk about China. And you can't do that. No. Totally different history, totally different um, aspect, like w- way of thinking. Westerners and Chinese people have a completely different, like they have, like for example, they'll sit there and put, looking for a teacher, white male, doesn't matter the country. And that's because it's, they're looking at the face. Yeah, and that face matters to uh, them. To it, them. Because to them, that face means that there's a prestige that goes there. It doesn't matter the quality of teacher. In that case, you know they're running that school entirely based on business. Off. They want it. They want it to present a certain facade so they can attract a certain clientele. Because realistically, a rich enough Chinese person is gonna hire you because they, yeah. they know your like they know your worth. But if you're trying to get that that we just moved from the sticks or we're from a farther out district. We don't really know, but we're trying to be part of the upward mobility, you know, so we want our kid to learn English, but we can't really afford it, but we can kind of afford it. Those are also, the, you know, those are also the schools where they'll have like, you know, those training schools where they have 40 kids in a class. Yeah. Like it's a regular school, you know. In those cases, it's like, A, you don't, pro- like you probably shouldn't be, like you shouldn't be mad that you didn't get that job unless you didn't qualify for it. And then, and qualify with air quotes. You know, and B, you know, if you're a serious teacher, then you'll get a serious teaching job. That's you know? true. Like, if you came out here and... You worked for, like, a international school. Yeah. You got the credentials. Yeah. You're going to get the job. Yeah, so you shouldn't even be worried about it. people say, oh, well, I want to make that extra money. I want to hustle. Uh, it's like, I mean, that stuff will come with those private lessons. Again, if you're a quality teacher, then people will be know that, you know, you're a quality teacher. So... That's true. I, 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 like, at first, I, I got to admit, I, when I first got here, I thought it was a little fishy. I was like, wait a minute, man. How are you going to hire this Russian chick <laughs> over this African-American who comes from a native? But I'm, I'm noticing now it's different than when I moved here in 2011. And it's also changed out, so... It's changed. Like, now they can kind of, they, they put, like, native speaker. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, it was, like, race specifically. And at first, I was, you know, you throw them back because, like I said, you come with, like, a Western mind. And you, when you see, like, white only, you're thinking, like, that is Jim Crow? Like damn! Like what is going on here? These are facts. But you, but you gotta remember, it's just it's face value. The people that have the toughest time getting a job is Chinese Americans, and that makes no logical sense to me because they technically would work as a bridge. Well, it's not it's like a gap. Like that. That's how. That's what, how what, I'm thinking. That's what how you're I'm thinking about is again, you're trying to process it as a Westerner. Not even just as a Westerner, like through a type of logic lens like yeah. they, you, they, you're trying to turn uh, uh, teach English and then a Chinese person opens the door and it's like what the hell yeah. but they're not seeing it like that's an American though no because they don't because for them it's like oh well, yeah you, you're American they, like at that point they're not American they're it's still just the Chinese face. It's, yeah, it's the face. you're still Chinese if you look Chinese you're Chinese just like with us when they see us and they say oh where are you from I mean and depending on yes the city you live in the answer is you'll get you know they'll because not the Chinese people don't even ask like sometimes they just ask where you're from you know Nishinagoran Nishinaliran uh, Nagar uh, you know up north where they yeah. get hard R's down and everything but yeah. sometimes they ask oftentimes though you still get those people who are like hey they, they don't even ask you they just look at they look at the next Chinese person Face hey Jordan. look at that African and then you yeah. say where. And that's why I fuck with Chinese people when I say non Korean or I'll just name like a random country. Like sometimes I name countries that like they have no reference point for. I'll be like, oh, I'm Mexican. And I just start speaking Spanish to them. And they're like, and then like they're double confused because A, they have no reference point for even hearing Spanish 90% of the time. And the second part is, like they don't know where Mexico is. Like they, they, they know I just said. kind of know, but it's like. I just said something in Chinese to them. Like. And again, the people who do this and have these qualms about them are stupid. Like, they're the uneducated masses. Like, realistically. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not, like, 
This is why you have a, a lot of people have a difficulty putting things into, into other people's perspective. And that annoys the hell out of me. Like, I try to come here and I try to, like, think, how, wh why do they think that way? Like, then I realize, oh, okay, they're not hiring a Chinese person because of the face of it. So with that being said, they, some people are not educated enough to know that black people come from, which is weird to me. Because my, my ex-girlfriend, she was like, yeah, and sometimes they don't even know that black people come from America. I'm like, well, then who the hell is Obama? But again, you have to know who Obama is. Like again, like you're saying, like you're you're saying this. Like, I think the whole world be, 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 but, but here's the thing: Who's the president of Russia? Putin. Putin. Who was the president before Putin? Um, Mikhail. Wrong. Huh? Dmitry Medvedev. And who was the president before him? Putin. Uh -huh. Before that, Gorbachev. Like you see, like the context of oh, he was the PM. I'm thinking the PM. The PM was Mikhail. Either way. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Now, if I say, who's the president of Mexico right now? This is your neighbor. Technically, since you're, you're from L.A., so... Well, it's not Fox. It's a new guy now. I See, I've been living in China too long, see? When I lived in L.A., I knew. But now that I'm here... Who's the president of Canada? It's that French dude. Good-looking dude. Uh, There's no president of Canada. Oh, but you mean PM. My bad. Exactly. See? Like, that should have uh, been the first thing you corrected. All right, all right. And then... Yeah, you're right. Uh, yes, it's uh, Trudeau. Uh, Justin you, Trudeau. Well, President and I think leader. But my but my point to be to say all that is like it's not really a Chinese person's job to care I, I about saying. what goes on outside of China. I don't Technically even, speaking, everybody knows about who the American president is. Like it's the superpower of the world. That's kinda like a China's difference. a superpower as well. Russia's a superpower. Like they're all like they're all in the UN Security Council. So if like I think everybody knows who Obama is, bro. I I I because that was big news to us. I think to the whole world. I don't think so. I think there were parts of the world who just really didn't give a shit, and then especially after a while, it even cared even less. Because this thing, even I carried like I was like, yeah, this is cool. It happened, bet, and I moved the fuck on. Like I was seeing like Obama shirts. I think they even had like an Obama FC, OFC. Bruh. Or it was like KFC, but then they had a, you didn't see that? But the Obama picture? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, uh, like he was like a celebrity. I mean, yes. But again. It was like Nelson Mandela or Here's something. Here's the thing. Or Gandhi. Even if a million Chinese people know something, there's still so many millions more who don't. Fair enough. Fair like, enough. Like, it's a lot of people here. Yeah, and no, like, no, you're right. And you're realistically, right. you don't even pass the same. Like, you can walk down the same street for four days straight, and every day you probably pass a new person. Like, even today, like, I walk by these little girls, right? And they waved at No, I waved at them because I saw them, you know, staring at me. They waved back. Mm -hmm. And then they get up and run next to me, and they're like, Where are you from? Like, they spoke English? Yeah, they spoke English. You know, they're like eight, nine years old. Okay, okay. So, so just, like, they wanted to practice. Yeah, and I was like, where do you think I'm from? And I'm like, uh, maybe you're from America because you speak English. I said, okay, who else speaks English in the world? And they're like, Britain. I was like, oh, good. Like, that's what the smaller one said. Mm -hmm. I was like, and then the one older one, she was like, no, he doesn't sound like he's from Britain. They, she said they put a different emphasis on their words. I was like, oh, so you're paying attention, right? But then also I, like, looked at the complex that I was And I was actually, because my... Uh, Google Maps had I me mean, walking directions, and I was cutting through a complex. Everything in this complex looked new, nice, clean. Okay. I didn't see any, like, old cars. And then once I crossed the gate, and then I went to this, to cut through another complex, you know, older, older cars, older people. And I was like, okay, so these kids represent, like, a wave of people who are receiving a certain type of education, right? right? But at the same time, I walked by groups of kids who just stared at me, I'd wave at them, and then they'd start, you know, ha, 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 you know, under their breath. And that dynamic right there just, you know, it reminds me and it keeps me level that there are Chinese people who know things, there are Chinese people who don't know things, and then I'm sure even a larger segment of the, comp the population who doesn't know things and doesn't care that they don't know things because they know the things that they need to know to survive. I mean, this place is a grinder. I mean, you know this, and you technically don't even work here. Yep. So imagine for the people who do have to actually make their money and they're living here. You know what I mean? Like, I've actually dealt with I, I, I have worked for a, a Chinese company. It was very interesting. Um, I would say 99% didn't talk to me. 
They were just like, they were just like, I don't speak English. I ain't trying to, I ain't even, like, they were, I don't know, they weren't scared, but they just didn't fuck with me that much. And then, you know, I had the two that could speak English. We're really nice. You're like, yo, do you want to go to lunch together? And blah, 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 blah. And you know what's funny is, because uh, I, I have a half a sleeve, you know, tattoos. Yeah. They didn't even trip on the tattoos. I went to the interview with my tattoos out. But that's like the least of their concerns when you're already black. Exactly. Like, they're not even, like... Like, you're, I, like I, you're already black, so everything about you already is so oppressive. Right. So it's like, all right, well, look, this black guy has tattoos. Like, it probably didn't even, like, process that you had tattoos. It's just, like, could have been scars in your arm. Or it could have just been like, oh, black guys have tattoos. Great. Move on. Like... But if I was Chinese, it probably, would be a thing. It, would, it probably would have been a problem. Because they don't care. They don't care about. I see white boys here, do, like whole necks and everything. Chinese people don't bat an eye. That's the, and that's what, you know we were talking about discrimination. There's also a level of benefit for some people. Foreign privileges are really they're, they're, they're foreign privileges, and some people are like, well, you know, like if you have blonde hair, blue eyes, you might get a, a certain type of uh, uh, group of girls chasing you. Yes. And there are some girls that go looking for brothers too. Like especially nah man, it is Guanzo too. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say any names, but I have I have definitely seen some Chinese chicks who like black guys, and uh, you know they be, they listen to hip hop. They think it's all cool and everything. And they go head hunting for black dudes, just like they go head hunting for for white guys. I'm gonna I'm let you rock with that one. But but granted, I lived in South China. I don't want nobody head hunting. Then again, but you don't really mess with Chinese chicks though. That is true. I don't. But my thing <laughs> is, if, but my like, thing is, if you probably was kind of flirting with you, but you just like, yeah, whatever. You know, whatever. I mean, but if you headhunt, you headhunt. You feel me? Like, I, I've been headhunting a couple times. I've like I talk, like if people talk to me, I will talk back. I'm not an abrasive human all the time. <laughs> just, you know, don't. I just not here for no fuck shit. That's all. Like, that's I feel you. I feel you. But then again, so like, what I was gonna say about that is, but you know, I don't really, I don't really like that. Because I feel like the person is not going out with you. Because a lot of people, you know, they come here and they, they like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm a, I was a nerd in Houston, but I'm going to come over here and just be smashing everything and everything. Now, if you was a nerd and you come in here to get yours in, do your thing by all means. Personally, I don't like to be fetishized. Um, it's just not like I want somebody to like me for me. Not because my skin is brown or... You know, your hair, your eyes are blue, or they got this romantic thing because they've been watching all these Romeo and Juliet, and now they see like a, a guy from Britain, and they're like, oh my God, he's gonna be like, because they're not really going out with you, they're going out with the idea of you. Yeah, but people, I mean, people do that across wherever you're at. I mean, no, yeah, like I, I mean, I've literally gotten into this fight in past relationships, but it's like, like women will constantly bring up like all the things they like about me, and I'm like, and then. They'll be like, why can't you just stop doing the things that I don't like about you? And I'm like, well, see, you like these good things and you've developed this idea that all of these good qualities about me are so redeeming and like it's a whole other person. Ignoring all of the flaws or other issues that I may have, insecurities or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, this happens whether it's black on black, Chinese and black, white and black, whatever. It's just people, a lot of times we get wrapped up in who people, what we love about people. Ignoring until it's a breaking point the things that get on our last nerves about people or the things that we can't necessarily process. But that's just that's just the honeymoon stage wearing off and you two, you know, getting to know each other. That's not really fetishizing though. I mean, I've I'm always not, I've always wondered this, right? So like, I like women with fat asses. I that's a preference. But what? But then again, like it's not fetishizing. I, I only go after women with fat asses though. That's a preference. That's not fetishizing. Well, there's only seems that's to be an attraction. Okay, I'm attracted to women with fat asses, but and they're usually brown skin. So am I fetishizing now the brown skin? Like no, that's a preference. So a Chinese woman can't be like I'm into black guys. No. Why is that now a fetish? Because they're not. They're not black. They're falling in love with the idea of being with a black guy. Not that's, necessarily. Is, what? What? How it? could you possibly? If she's if, if her vagina gets wet solely when she sees black guys, I don't understand how this is not a preference at this point. Are you kidding me? If you ex only like okay, you like girls with fat asses, right? Yeah. And you like brown skin. 
Yeah. But there's a spectrum within that, right? Yeah. So that's not bad. Would you ever date a white girl? No. Never? No. Have you ever? No. Okay, well, an Asian girl? No. You've never dated an Asian chick? No. Never even wanted to. A Latin chick? I mean, like, if we're going, like, she's black, and then, like, she has his... Mestizo. I mean, I guess, I don't know. Bruh. I know I've dated, like, black women whose families are Puerto Rican, Dominican, uh, but yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Belizean, but, but they're black. Like, negro is negro. Like, I don't think you can fetishize yourself, though. You that's what I always, like, that's what like, I be trying to figure out, though. Like, where's the line the, of fetishization? Uh, I, I think the fetishization is, it, okay, the guy's not even good looking. Or the girl's not even good looking, but because they have an attribute like blonde hair, blue eyes, and you're just attracted to that idea of the blonde hair, blue eyes. Whereas, like, if, like, you're not, you, it's true, she has a fat ass. All right, so is Kim Kardashian, does she fetishize people? Because she seems to only be with black dudes. No, nah, she was with that one dude. That one white guy. Okay, so she had two. One. Two. Fine. She had two white guys, but everyone else was clearly black. They don't look anything like each other. So is that a fetish or is that her preference? I think that's a preference. Guy? I think that's a preference. So like, this Chinese example, woman dates black men because for whatever reason, but in realistically, she's like, I'm attracted to black men. Because here's I know some white girls the who are attracted to soul. No, if it's your own, if your own two black men. Oh, who? And who? like I know, like I like there's a white woman who's in my social circle. Mm -hmm. She only dates black men. I think that's a fetish. When it, it's the word only. Would you ever date a black a, a black girl whose ass ain't that fat but ain't that skinny either? It's just like, man, eh, I could work with this. I mean, like, yeah, her, I like, her, like her personality was dope. She was cool. Yeah, she was I have. See, that's not. A, see, you have a preference for fat asses, but you can make an exception if the girl has other qualities. That's why it's a preference. You prefer to get a fat ass, but if it's not there, but she was still are, black. <laughs> but you're black, so that can't be a fetish, because you're black. So that you, of course, you're gonna be. That's I mean, be. but aesthetics, realistically, like for me, it's less about aesthetics. When we look at like you know the human difference, right? Your aesthetics make up all of like half a percent of your genetic code, right? Mm -hmm. My thing is is culture, right? Like I don't personally like having to deal with other cultures intimately. I don't want to have to, like, there's certain conversations that I don't like having just in general. See, I like it. So for me, I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's the culture aspect, right? Like, okay. black people, we can, like, like, it's probably, like, okay, so black, like, Westerners, I can deal with, like, we can have, like, there, there are a lot of unnecessary or unneeded conversations, right? Like, if somebody, like, calls me nigga, right? like an authority figure or someone with a badge, right? Mm -hmm. And I come home and I'm like, yo, this cracker-ass cop or whoever the fuck it was called me a nigga. Even if it's a black cop, right? Like, called me a nigga and drew his gun on me, right? Like, she needs to, like, without, like, missing a beat, understand, like, why I'm upset. Like, I don't need to then come home and, like, have to unpack the entire situation in terms of, like, police overreach. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are the types of shit that I don't want to deal with. I don't want to, like, be blasting Wu-Tang and, like, she can come in and, like, never listen to Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. And she's be like, oh, okay. I don't fuck with Wu-Tang. Like, I'll accept that. Like, it'll be a hard thing to accept. But I can accept that. But then also, like, not have to... Like, I've had... Like, I've had to have conversations with people like, well, why do you listen to music with, like... Maybe that's what's wrong with your people. Like, you listen to music with all this violence and crime. And that's and like, well, if you don't understand the social systems that and the structural inequality that goes in... And it's like... See, it's like that right there. These are conversations I don't want to have in my own intimate household. Fair. So, fair. so that's for me. It's it's a culture thing. Like See, I've I've dealt I've with never... women from different countries who are black, but this is also probably I don't get along with Africans, right? Like I mean, I get along with them, but like yeah. I can I've tried to date an African woman, and never really gets past like the 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 we went out a couple of times, maybe we smashed stage because it's like the culture comes in. It's like a I don't know, fuck. I've never dated an African chick. This is crazy because I'm half African. 
But culture, like, to me, like, like it matters a lot. And it's like, when they come at you with the, you know... I think because I've been with so many... What are you doing for me lately, Eddie? Like, I've been with so many different, like, cultures. I have never been, like, the same... Cult- like, every relationship is a new culture or race. It's just... I, I'm, I'm a weirdo. Maybe you fetishize difference. Nah. <laughs> I just, I'm open. I like everybody, man. I don't have, like, any... I'm open. I, as long as it, I like the person. You know what I'm saying? She could be... Uh, I mean, I do have a preference. I like, for example, I like black hair. Black hair, fish, uh, uh, raven hair, for whatever reason, draws my attention. Why? I don't You're saying, know. like, the color? Yeah, black. Like, pitch black hair. See, when people say black hair, I mean, it's like, texture. I was like, all right. Nah, uh, I like... I just like the... I don't know why the color. It doesn't matter on what race... But as soon as I see jet black hair, my eyes just like get drawn to it. Yellow hair, you not that much. It's kind of like, uh, but I've dated a blonde. So I'm not going to say like, oh, you can't say that I better shy because if that person's cool, it's a preference. I prefer black hair, but it's not a must. This is where the, you, were, you were asking like, where's the, the line divide? Preference. I prefer she has a fat ass. But it's not, like, a must. See, for me, I guess I don't really understand, like, shit when it's, like, very blatant. Like, if a woman's like, yeah, let me get some of that big black dick. It's like, wait, whoa, this is, this is too much. Like, right there? Or, like, I, like okay, I've also been to Spain. Like, I've heard, like, men, like, specifically, like, walk up to, like, black women and be like, yeah, like, I know y'all are freaks. Like, you know, like, and the things, you know, things, like, of that nature... So it's like immediately like this is a fetish, right? Like That's I can like I can recognize that. It's like where the subtle line is, and I'm like, because again, like, That's deal with like, people. like if she just hit me up because I'm black, she didn't even probably look at me for more than like five minutes. She just glanced, was like black. I'm like, mm, that mm, red flags, red flags. Uh-huh. Like you should get out. She's getting down with all kind of brothers, ugly, every just because the dude's black, just letting it, letting them smash. That's when you like, yo, this girl just... All right, like, well, that can, again, the, that's like, it's the, like, I can recognize that extreme, but I'm saying, like, yeah. if she's been in five, relate, like, let's say she's 30 years old, she's been in five relationships. Mm-hmm. And, and they just so happen to be black? They're all black dudes. I don't think that's a fetish. I think that's just preference. She probably prefer. There's, it, the line is blurry. The line is definitely blurry. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. There's, you can tell, though. Like... Like for example, for, like, for example, for example, because for example, again, if it's there's not some obvious, white, there's some white chicks who, because you can't really sound a, a race, but they sound like they're from the urban community. They're wearing cornrows. They got the big old hoop earrings. They got like a tattoo with the with the spade. What is it? The ace of spades or whatever it, that that fetish thing that they're doing is. I don't know. Black people can't be racist. Disagree with that one. Fine, disagree with it. I can be discriminatory. I can be prejudiced. I do if not have to see racism is a system. If a white person says he doesn't like black people, what are you gonna think? I'm gonna think he's prejudiced. You but here's you know that means racist. If he has, a, that's the definition. But if he has, if no, he is prejudiced. You don't, racism, have, you don't have a superiority complex. Right. That's even with the superiority complex, it does not make you racist. See, racism is about power. If this white man who said this has no power to actually affect the lives of people... You're talking about people, supremacy. That's different than no, racism. No, I'm talking about isms. Okay, anything that ends in an ism is a system. That's why no. sexism is a system of difference again, based on sex, right? Racism is the same way. Again, you're talking to someone who literally just unpacks words all the time, like... Isms means like is indicative of the system that happens, and that's why I'm saying, from the standpoint of, you can be a bigot, yes, and you can call me bigoted, you can call me prejudiced, you can call me discriminatory. However, within the confines of the societies, plural that I exist within, I don't actually hold any power for with my prejudices. And actually, I guess sometimes I do hold the power, but I don't ever act on it because I still understand like where my own biases and things so like prime example i run a program sending again hbcu students to china there are white students who go to hbcus not a lot of them no but when they come and apply for my program i don't discount them automatically because they're white actually i've never turned any of them down who said they wanted to go 
because they qualified in every other you know conceivable way. So they had the requisite credits, they had the GPA, they had the major, they had the desire. It was like, hey, you a student, you can go. I could have right there been like, I don't fuck with white people in aggregate. So you know what? I'm just gonna withhold this opportunity from you specifically because I don't fuck with white people. No. Now, are me and that student going to be buddy-buddy? We're going to have intimate conversation? No. But am I going to stop you from just being opportunity? No. You know what I mean? And that's where the isms, and that's why with America, we have a racist system. Yes, with that guides our society because there are policies and practices in place that, are, that uphold a certain racial structure. So from that standpoint, it's like, yeah, but don't call me racist. You can call me a bigot. You can call me prejudiced, you can call me discriminatory, but you can't call me racist. I think you can be racist. What you define as far as the American system is supremacy, dominance. But like, for example, racist is, an, is a part of the ism. It's an ist. No, that's a, a racist is a person. A racist who basically is, is somebody that. Who practices. A, a racist is someone who practices racism. Like, that's what it is. No, like, racism not, is, though, right? The definition of racism is a person that thinks that their race is superior to the other. That's the, the real definition in the, in, the, in, the, in the dictionary. So if you think I that... I don't have the dictionary right now, so... But I, 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 I know I based on how we, I, all, I how we all process this stuff, especially in... What you defined was supremacy. But as far as... I, I can look it up. Like, I, I supremacy is... I mean... Steve Bannon is a, like, again, like, we talk about supremacy that, again, goes back to, again, people's actions and things like that. Like, you can live in a white supremacist society, and in this case right now, we're sitting in a Chinese supremacist society. But it doesn't make the Chinese people racist because they... That's up. what I'm saying. The, the system favors them. You were just talking about a system yeah. that favors one and suppresses the other. That's, but that's the thing. What, where does the Chinese people suppress anything else? Like, that's, and there's, there's the difference. They they don't suppress anyone else. They don't make it easy. That's all they that's don't suppress. Enough. But you, and maybe you don't know this because you're from California, all y'all a little bit disconnected from like the rest of the country. I'm going to let you know, like, I've lived in the American South. Like, there are actually people and systems that are set up, again, to stop people. Like, again, California is, California is easy in terms of, like, that's where people from the South went to get the fuck away. You know what I mean? Like, they I didn't, didn't, like, they didn't separate. They, they didn't, but I'm saying, like, they don't. They didn't practice redlining up, you know, the housing. I mean, yes, there was housing discrimination, but then they had these neighborhoods and things that were set up where you could actually then go and buy your home, set up businesses and cater to your own community. These aren't things that were happening in the South or on the East Coast. That's why so many black people took their ass up to Watts, to Compton, to Baltimore Hills and all those yeah. other. Like, y'all are different out there. So that's what I'm trying to explain to you. Like, your, your vantage point is a little bit. Not the aggregate well, of what I, I other people are feeling. I'm not saying you haven't, but living there is it's different. No, oh, I, I, I felt Trying it. to get loans there is different. Trying to set up businesses, cater to, to your people To be honest with there. you, it should be technically easier because you got more black-owned businesses down there than we do. We actually have to rely on other people. You guys have black banks, black uh, 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 real estate agents, black areas. Like, you just named Walnut Hills, for example, Ladera. You could probably name 30 in the South. So you guys aren't even dependent on that system no more. You've got your own thing going on, like almost like a, 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 a separated Black Wall Street type of thing going on. Where Atlanta, for example, man, when I went to Atlanta, I was like, this is this is crazy. I was like, this is some baller shit. I just saw upper middle class black people in like half the city. Yeah, but I'm talking like no. Atlanta's again. Atlanta is a very minimal example. When you go to other places, like you go, they to, got them in Texas. They got them in uh, uh, where in uh, Texas because. Houston, like, say, Houston, where there's a lot of black people there, there's still not a lot of black ownership there. See what I'm saying? Like, in Dallas, there's a lot of black people, That's not a lot Dallas, of black ownership. When you, look they got at, a few, uh, when you look at Shreveport, Louisiana, a lot of black people, not a lot of black ownership. When you look at Tuskegee, Alabama, again, not a lot of wealth within the city, and there's not a lot of economic opportunity. And again, all a lot of the things that people say are good for America, like putting up Walmarts and Targets and these large corporations that come in and own the places, then what do they do? They def It ends up taking business away from those small businesses forcing those people to close then having to go and work for these larger entities and then again now you've increased the wealth gap and the opportunity gap and then you talk about ownership so when you want to come in and say okay in the south 
there's more black owned businesses. Yes, probably if you ran the numbers, but when you actually look at the actual power that then comes with that, we or have. actually separating out and actually being able to rely on one another, no, because again, there's still that idea of corporatism that's in America. That's that a propagated again by our racist system because again, how easy is it for you to build up a black owned business to the point where it can be corporate uh, in, in su as such a large conglomerate like say Walmart or Target or and the biggest problem realistically is that black people in the states are only 12 and a half percent of the population. Mm -hmm. Like when you really look at it. So it's like we think that there's a lot of us because we, when we travel, most of the time we're going to where we're at, right? Because, you know, and maybe you're saying like, okay, well, you know, I go to Montana and shit like that too. But what I mean is, and you stay at the, you know, the Hilton downtown or wherever, you know, wherever, and you're not necessarily always with black people. But what I mean is when we go places, when we do things, we're doing black things. So we're in black spaces. So we're around black people, but there's a huge portion of the country where we're not okay. at all. I know. And with that, then it's like, all right, so if I'm a business owner, right? Because there are corporations who are run by black Americans. Of course. MX. Yeah. And what's the... The Xerox. Amway. But when you look at... Uh, what's that? What's that restaurant? Olive Gardens? Yeah, but when you look at... Then again, like, all right, so now we're talking about who's catering to what, right? So if you're going to own one of those large conglomerations, you're not always going to be able to cater to your own people in the same way Obama didn't cater to any black people at all while he was in office. You know what I mean? I mean, and I guess that's even a bit of a misnomer. He did allocate funding in, on the slide for different programs and this, that, and the third, but realistically in aggregate, right? There wasn't a lot done, and there could have been way more. He could have been like, you know what? We're doing this in... And, he never, and you never really have to say the word yeah. reparations, but you could do a lot of, you could, yeah, you could a direct lot of, a lot of policies and such. That he did it for help. a lot of minority groups, gay people. I, I just want I'm, to not, I'm not disagreeing. What I'm saying, though, in terms of, if we're going back to, you know, where and Permission. holding power and getting around a lot of the systems well, that exist, again, not to just propagate one group up. Mm. It also, for the way the American system works is, it, everything works adversarially. Our courts are adversarial. Like, there, everything has to be something against something else. There's nothing that can work in tandem. You look at something that recently happened, like Charlottesville. The reason why white, like those white men get all their, you know, the draws in a bunch and want to march and all this stuff, it's not because you're taking down Confederate memorials and all. I mean, it is... But for them, it's a view, like if one group right gains any amount of power, they, they see it as that's they're a, losing that power. Is annoying as hell. Right? When you look at our court system, equality threatens them, and I'm like, that, how? But, that's, how? but again, that's the mindset that we have that's as insane. Americans. I'm not saying it's right. What I'm trying to explain is that's the adversarial point of living in the United States or being an American. Every our courts what, are adversarial. And what moral compass? Is equality bad? That is crazy to me. It's not just about it's, but see, they're not looking at it from equality because again, they're not for them. It's not about equality. It's about maintaining what dominance has for them always been. And as I always explain to every one-on-one -on -one class that's, that the, I this, had, this is going back to what I was saying though earlier. That's white supremacy. Yeah, but it's, it but again, it's also the system that allows it to continue, and that system is adversarial. Like, all right, so as I, I always explain to every one-on-one -on -one class that I have, especially when I teach at the community colleges, because I always teach at, you know, community colleges, mostly white people, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm like, look, in America, we have prestige scales for everything. Prestige meaning, like, how much value you put yeah. into something, whether it be your job, whether yeah, it be yeah, yeah. The activities you participate in. Um, TV shows, but we even have prestige scales in terms of ethnicities, right? And the one thing, and then even not even just ethnicities, because now you can throw like homosexuals and transgender people into this, and now we look at just different types of people, and there are different prestiges. But anytime a group in America says they're being marginalized, like just like on a piece of paper, you know what the margin is, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're being marginalized, that means 
you're being put closer to that margin, which means something has to set the margin. What sets the margin in the United States? For the past, how long how old is the country? 270 something years old? Yeah, 200 something. Something like that, right? The Constitution was ratified in 1789. We'll start from there. In the past 200 and so years, right? The margin in our country, in that country, right, has always been black people. Nasty! And any group that says we're being marginalized, whether it be gay people, transgender people, whether it be women, whether whoever it is, they're always saying we're being treated like, like that's code for saying we're being treated like niggas. And that's where the margin is. So when you move from there and you can look at how things are being done, right, and how when people are. When Native Americans say that, I don't think that's, that's what they're, they're, they're thinking. I mean, they have, they're kind of in the same category with us in terms of like, but then also, you know. I think they're pretty pissed. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm saying like they're in the same category, but then also like even more so because like they're, it's almost like they're like, realistically, they're just ignored. And a lot of what's happening. I mean, look at Standing Rock. Like that's still happening. Like it's literally still happening. Like they're literally like they're just fighting because they just want their water, water not to be that, polluted. That's crazy. That's all it is. They just don't want polluted water. That's crazy. And then what are they doing? Getting sandblasted with watering hoses. Like it's so if, you know. Like they've got a whole like they're not even, unfortunately they're not even on the piece of paper that we're talking about. Uh, a friend of mine wow. got this belief because continuing on to what you were saying. He was like, the next change of census mm -hmm. is going to be including white Hispanics. Do you believe that? There it does. Because Hispanic No, is but it's going to, like, it, it ain't gonna, they're not going to have their own category. They're going to be able to actually just check in white. Because you know how it says, it says Hispanic. Well, what, what does it say? It says, like, it's, it's okay, white, it's, black. So there's, you can pick the six categories, but Hispanic is then also, like, because they reckon, because they reckon, like, being Hispanic is entirely different than, like, an ethnicity. It's, like, speaks to culture and language. Mm -hmm. So you can be uh, yeah, it's just Hispanic. You can be black and be Hispanic. You can be yeah. white and be Hispanic. That's why you can be Chinese and be but that's Hispanic. Why, but that's why it says in, in parentheses. It says it's, not, it's a separate category. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But like the parentheses, yeah, where it says like white non Hispanic, uh, yeah. like but you can still check like white non Hispanic, and then the next box check Hispanic, and it's. Still I think they're gonna include they're gonna because all those well, all the like, people with last name Gutierrez who can't speak Spanish, like clearly like yeah, yeah, their family know. came from. Like, like, I think later they're going to take that category out and it's just going to be put. That, that's what my friend was saying. He's like, the next sentence, like before they was like, um, Italians, Irish have their own category. And oh, then they just moved it up. So he's like, the Hispanic, in order, because they're declining to keep it back, uh, to put it back up, they're going to go ahead and put Hispanic now. They're going to take the Hispanic part off and include that in the white census. Maybe. But that, that again, it's not... It, I mean, that's that's a that's a supremacy system. That's not talking about racism. Just, it's not talking about racism. No, that definitely is racism. If you if you that's care, racist. That is, if you care that much, like to do that in a society which you in in a society which you want to define as a plural society, as a post. Like think about it. If this is a post, if it's a post racial society, then realistically, none of that shit should matter. We should just be like Cuba. You know what Cuba does for their census? They literally count the people. That's it. They don't count who's they don't count whose origin comes from what, who immigrated from where, who's it. They count the people. Cause guess what? If you're born in Cuba, then you're Cuban. That's the most important thing. That's where a real post-racial society is. And yes, Cuba has colorism issues, and yet just like every other you know, Latin country, and yes, they have their own problems, blah, 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 blah. I don't hear people jumping in the comments talking about Cuba's this and that, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> what I'm saying is, if you're a truly post-racial society, and you want to eliminate the systems that create ethnic inequalities and racial divides, then you stop putting an onus on race, and you don't a lot, like, someone explained to me that, like, what the what Castro did during the revolution is made marginalized people come together to realize, you know what? We're all getting fucked by Batista. Like we're all getting fucked by him. So it's like you can either, you know, you can worry about like, oh, is this white man gonna like stab me in the back or is this black dude good for me? Da, da, da. It's like, no, like right now we're all in a position against Batista. Mm -hmm. 
I have a feeling that they're going to include, as somebody who comes from the West, they're going to include uh, Hispanics, and they might start marginalizing that way because they be, they be taking over neighborhoods. Not that I got a problem with it because I grew up in a Hispanic neighborhood when I lived in South Central, and in South Central pretty much right now, it's just, it's not a black internet anymore. It's, it's, the, that dream is like people just listening to music. They, haven't, they have not been there. You go to South Central right now, I'm pretty sure it's 75. I don't think count is South Central. No, it comes to a different city. Okay. It's like San Harlem or something like that. I was just wondering, because somebody explained to me like South Central is like a... And oddly enough, Compton ain't even majority black. Okay. There's actually a lot of white people there. There's actually nice homes and everything. People just get caught up in the whole media thing. They don't really understand. Oh, I know Compton was like where like black middle class people set up when they were running away from... Watts. Watts. Yeah. Remember the Watts riots? Yeah. It was mostly Watts. Compton was eh, but I would say Watts is where a lot of people opened up their own, like, we had, we had, like, uh, jazz spots and our own businesses, a whole boulevard with just, like, black-owned hotels. Now it's all Koreans. In terms of ownership. And Watts? Watts <laughs> is still Because they're on the rise. That's where they burn those businesses. They burn the Korean ones, man. Yeah. Which I don't agree with I was in, I, was, I remember the L.A. riots as a kid. And what? The L.A. riots as a kid was interesting because I didn't realize there was that much tension with the Koreans until it kicked off. And I was like, whoa, they really getting it in, man. I remember the, the, a couple of gas stations by my house blowing up, big old mushroom clouds and everything, and people looting and rioting. And then as long as they had black on, if they put black on, they, got, they didn't get touched. Everybody else got torched. I mean, at least we respect our home a little bit. But, you know. I, and all that stuff that you were talking about, I wanted to get this last point across, all that stuff about down south and you know, the system and Target and Walmart moving in. Well, you can't blame Target and Walmart. They're doing what they do. I blame black people for not having a collective consciousness. Now this is some heavy shit. I'll leave that at that. I'll leave it at that. Because I mean, lot... Koreans do. Yeah. The Chinese do. The Hispanics do. For whatever reason, we see black-owned business, we start hating on it or something. I'm like, oh, who owned that? Oh, the Ethiopian. No, I ain't even. Or, oh, what's the quality like? I bet you the quality is shit. I'd rather go to Target. It's like, dude, come on. Well, you guys gotta have a collective consciousness. Be like, yo, these are my peoples. I'm just gonna go to that spot. So it was nice having you. Black in China finally came through to the Goodbye China podcast. And soon it will actually be a Goodbye China podcast. I'm thinking, I'm not, what's the new name gonna be? Hello, Columbia? I don't know. Should be Hola, Columbia. Hola, Columbia. I don't know. I'm going to have to Get rename down. my podcast or something. I don't know, man. How, Max? How, Sway? How? Fight me. Tell me how it's going. <laughs>